Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a very, very senior and accomplished leader from the social sector from India, Mr. Kushal Raj Chakravarti. Kushal, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chakravarti is the founder and managing trustee of the Lotus Petal Foundation, which has been set up with the primary objective to create equal opportunities for underprivileged children living in urban and semi-urban areas. He has also been recognized, awarded, and felicitated several times. Kushal, what an amazing journey you seem to have had. So before we start discussing Lotus Petal Foundation, tell me about your own journey from the corporate sector to the social sector. So, uh, you know, I completed my MBA from uh, Indian Institute of Management and then got into a corporate career. And uh, I worked in the corporate sector for almost 18 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a really uh, enjoyable experience. I worked primarily with two companies, um, really good organizations, uh, got fabulous exposure, traveled the world over. Mm. did many different things and uh, it was really good. Having said that, uh, there was always uh, a sense of uh, that there is something which is left to be done and mm. there's a feeling of uh, a lack of fulfillment and uh, that was there with me, you know, uh, all the time and uh, it so happened that uh, uh, in the November of 2011, uh, I was... Uh, in Gurgaon at home and I was dropping my children off to school and uh, if you bear with me on that bitter cold morning, uh, you would have seen that there were two children walking barefoot, no shoes, no caps, no sweater uh, to a nearby school which was uh, run uh, in a temple and you would also have seen my own children who were in the best uh, winter wear. And yet, I was feeling that whether this is good enough or not. Mm. And uh, I was I was greatly disturbed by you know uh, what I saw in that uh, moment of time. Yeah. And that moment of time actually turned out to be something which changed the course of my life. Yeah. I was very disconcerted. I went to this temple uh, that weekend, and I found that it was not just these two kids, but there were over two fifty uh, such children. Who really were braving the bitter cold of uh, Delhi NCR and uh, with, without much uh, winter wear. Mm. So I thought that the least I could do was to give them shoes, caps, socks. And that's how the journey of uh, Lotus Petal started. And once I uh, gave them uh, uh, this winter wear, I experienced an amazing sense of fulfillment, something which I had never experienced in my life. And that feeling is still fresh uh, inside my heart. Mm. That started a process where alongside my corporate uh, job, I started to help the non-profits in the city of Gurgaon, mm. trying to share my time with them, uh, helping them with uh, their work or sometimes uh, donating a few things. And that kept on happening over a period of a year. And then in the winter of 2012, I was back at the school and uh, to give shoes because uh, the children had outgrown them. Hmm. Then I saw this boy, he seemed around 15 years old, but he was in grade 5. Hmm. So I asked him that, okay, you know, why are you in grade 5? He said that the school is up to grade 5 and he had tried to go to a private school, EWS, he went to a government school, but he didn't see that, you know, there was much in it for him. Hmm. Because he liked this place, uh, he was studying here in grade 5 for the last 5 years. Wow. Then uh, it was not just this boy, there were many other children studying at grades far lower than their age. Hmm. And uh, when I dwelled into this topic, I found that it was not a problem just of Gurgaon, but it is across the country. And there are an estimated 60 uh, million children uh, who are out of school or studying at grades far lower than their age. Wow. This uh, was very, very disturbing for me to see this mm. children languishing in the education system. Mm. It became economically viable for their parents. And in the best case scenario, one would become an auto rickshaw driver or a maid. And uh, many would find a place in the underbelly of society. 
and uh, this this really stayed with me and i used to feel that you know what can i do to change this mm. i felt that it was too big a problem for me to tackle but then uh, the thought came to me that at least the children who are in front of me what can i do for them mm. that's how the first uh, program of lotus petal called pratishthan was born mm. in which the idea was to take this 12 to 14 year olds uh, from their current levels of learning which was around grade 4 or grade 5 straight up to 12 in 5 years along with the vocational skill make them digitally literate they can be able to speak fluently in english and one more language and mainstream them so that they can start a job based on education so that over a period of time they can increase their earnings totally so that's how it started in 2013 nice. one room in a shopping arcade near my home no teacher was willing to come and teach in this fast track manner but one teacher agreed he was a maths teacher soon many other teachers came people joined the mission and one thing led to the other and uh, in 2016 the the number of children had grown tremendously and uh, i felt that uh, this is where i need to put in my energy my time and that's where i decided to leave my corporate career mm. dedicate myself to serving the underprivileged children so that you know they can start a life uh, a job a livelihood based on education so the uh, journey shifted from corporate to social sector amazing what an amazing journey kushal but then my next question before i get into more details is in a very corporate style uh, where are you today and then we'll talk about how you got there <laughs> how many children do you have how many locations do you have so so right now as we speak uh, we have uh, two campuses mm-hmm. one is the old campus uh, which we had started way back in 2013 mm-hmm. so here we have uh, approximately 700 children uh, who are studying in the campus mm-hmm. and we also uh, have uh, started a new campus uh, this is in the outskirts of uh, gurugram it's the lotus petal senior secondary school mm-hmm. which right now has uh, 600 students and we have plans to scale it up in the next 3 years to almost 10000 students which will make it the biggest uh, philanthropic school in the country mm-hmm. apart from this uh, we also uh, run a digital platform for education Mm-hmm. we conduct live interactive classes so as of now we have around 140 partner schools which are some are government some are non profit schools mm-hmm. wherein uh, we are taking classes and approximately 6000 students are taking classes Amazing. so that that's where we are we have around 170 odd people who work for us we call them change makers mm-hmm. and uh, we are all at it every single day so that more and more children can get quality education amazing what a, what an incredible journey and i i believe this has just started for you amazing so let's now talk a little bit uh, kushal about yes. let's first start with how is the word uh underprivileged defined is there a government definition or is it just an economic definition i think it's a it's an economic uh, definition uh which is like you could say the people who are underserved or who are not able to have an access to you know education and care and the economic uh, opportunities in the government definition there is something called a economically weaker section mm-hmm. for which uh, a certain norm of income is defined correct when when we talk about underprivileged what we talk about is uh, you know uh, children who come from families where uh parents started school but they had to drop out because of uh, economic situations or they did not get the quality education and they are doing like menial labor jobs so so that's the kind of definition we have for the underprivileged and uh, they are living in the margins of uh, society uh, and uh, they are lacking access to quality education to nutrition to healthcare so that's how we actually uh, look at it amazing and you said that you know your first story that you narrated was about the two children who you saw walking in winter without shoes so that is one challenge where you know there isn't enough clothing then you saw the challenge about education uh, what are some of the inequality in opportunities that you have seen um, for underprivileged children 
so uh, uh, you know ashutosh the inequality uh, starts in the mother's womb the children uh, you know uh, they are born to mothers who don't get sufficient nutrition so by the time they are born they already are are cognitively behind a child who would have been born in a regular family Mm. so the so the disadvantage starts uh, right at the time when they are born then typically they would enter the formal education system by the age of 5 or 6 years uh, which is around 2 and a half years behind that of a regular child mm. and then they the learning gap which begins it just keeps growing because of poor elementary education poor poor nutrition mm. parents are unable to guide them uh, uh, for education and gradually by the time they are adolescent you know uh, their learning levels are of grade 3 or 4 they lose interest right drop out that's one big challenge which is there second is uh, is nutrition you know even after they are born uh, the first 5 years is very important and uh, lack of adequate nutrition that really uh, creates a big impact mm-hmm. the third thing which i have seen is that uh, healthcare um, you know in an underprivileged child unless the ailment becomes something which is intolerable mm. uh, the medical treatment is not sought there was a boy in our school uh, he had uh, rash all over his body mm. when i took him to the doctor the doctor who was a skin specialist he said that you need to see an ent specialist mm-hmm. what has an ear doctor got to do with this Correct. and then we came to know that he had gone to the village 6 months back taken a dip in the swimming pool picked up a ear infection oh. which had person day after day and he was scratching and that's how the rash spread into his whole body wow. and 25% of his uh, hearing was lost because the ear drum had got ruptured so so this is another thing which is a very big disadvantage mm-hmm. about the health so wow. all these things actually you know culminate by the time they are uh, adolescents they enter the adulthood and they have no other option but to start a menial labor job then they get married they become fathers and mothers of uh, children whom they cannot guide for mm. education and they get trapped in the vicious mm. cycle of poverty wow. so that's, that's how it just keeps uh, going generation after generation mm. and you know when you address the challenges of education healthcare and nutrition give me some uh, examples uh, and examples are the best way to communicate all the great work that you're doing uh, of the work that Lotus Petal Foundation is doing to help uh, in each of these three areas? So I'll, I'll, I'll share a couple of examples. So the first student at Lotus Petal, uh, she came to us uh, when she was uh, 14 years old. She had learning levels of uh, grade 5 and this was the year 2013. And uh, the moment she walked into that one room school, I asked her, you know, like uh, I asked her her name, she said, I'm Saloni. I said, what do you want to, why do you want to join this one room school with five or six mm. people children can sit? And she said, I want to become a doctor. Mm. And that's why I want to come here. So, you know, she started in 2013 with grade four learning levels. Yeah. In 2016, she completed uh, her grade 10. Wow. So she covered six years mm. in three years time. Mm. After that, uh, in 2018, she completed her grade 12. Mm. Then we put her into uh, one of the premier coaching institutes to prepare for NEET. And, uh, you know, there we have to provide all kinds of support for right. her just in that environment where the children from privileged families coming from cars mm. and uh, she has to be there. We've got new dresses for her. We took her to cafes to make get her used to the mainstream. And then in 2019, she cleared NEET and got into a medical college. Amazing. And now she's a third year student. So you can see that the education intervention took a child who was in grade four learning levels and in 2013, mm. 2019, she's in a medical college. Amazing. So this is what the education can do. There are many children, you know, we have seen that uh, when they get the right nutrition, especially mm. in the pre-primary, in the nursery, kindergarten, grade one, uh, we give them a special breakfast, which really is a big dose of nutrition for them. We have seen how their cognition improves dramatically in a very short span of time. Mm. So, so these are some of the things which is there. There's one girl, Guria. Uh, she was a recipient of the shoes in 2011, the first time round. 
and at that time she was in grade two. Uh, she was, I think, eleven years old. And 2018, I discovered that she had come into our fast track program. Mm. And now, as we speak, it's been a year that uh, she works as a software testing executive in a multinational company in in Gurgaon. Yeah. While she still lives in the Selokera, uh, the village slum areas, but she actually works um, uh, in a in a really nice office in a nice environment. And she's broken the ceiling. And her family will also break the the. the Barrier of uh, poverty, and she will have a tremendous amount of social mobility. So nice. these are some of the things how you know we are able to bring nutrition, education, mm. livelihood to create an ultimate impact uh, in the life of the child. How amazing! Thank you for sharing these two amazing stories, especially Saloni's story. My God, I mean you've uh, you know God bless her, God bless you with more power. But Kushal, you know all the work that you are doing needs funding. Yeah. Uh, how are you sourcing a lot of the funding, and how do people who would like to fund you get involved with you? So uh, it started, you know, by putting by me putting in my own savings, and uh, at one time also took a personal loan to keep it going. Mm. And then I realized that you know I need to seek money from others, and there are enough people in this world, yeah. a lot of goodness in their heart, who want to give. So anybody wanting to, you know, uh, partner with us, uh, we are most welcome. Uh, we are a certified non-profit in India. Uh, we also have uh, organizations in the U.S. and in U.K. through which people can make uh, grants and donations. And there are multiple ways in which you could donate. Every sum of money is welcome. Even a very small of money goes a long way here. And with the new school coming up, uh, we are looking at, you know, people who want to partner. With the, on a lifelong basis mm. to make sure that children continue to get uh, higher education. Mm. Uh, anyone could go to our website and you could make a donation. You could come and do volunteering with us. Mm. Volunteering is also very important. It's like the fourth dimension of education. Children develop confidence when they speak to people they don't meet every day. Mm. Learn new things. So you could do that. You could spread the word about us. And uh, the, one of the key ingredients of why we have been able to scale up rapidly and grow. Is that we have been very open for people to come and participate and make it their own, mm. and uh, this is this is really a, a, a community-driven initiative of uh, common people, and we are always always looking forward to people to come and partner with us. Fascinating, uh, Kushal. You also have vocational programs uh, like Jivika and Blue Coach. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about these vocational programs and uh, do give one or two examples. So, uh, Jivika basically is the, the livelihood intervention and uh, this is looking into multiple trades for which uh, there is a demand in the industry uh, in terms of jobs. So, for the children who are in the fast track uh, program with us uh, in the fourth and the fifth year, one of the years is dedicated for uh, the skill development. Mm -hmm. So, there are courses in BFSI, in digital marketing, uh, in uh, retail, front office. So we equip them with the skills. We also ensure that they get uh, some kind of project experience uh, at a retail outlet or in the back office of uh, any of our corporate partners. And then the certification that they get is from NSDC. Mm. And through that, uh, they're able to get jobs. Like um, the girl Guria I talked about. So she was certified in few of these things through which she was able to obtain a job. Mm. One of our students from the first batch, Puni, uh, he did a course in uh, tailoring and dressmaking, and then he got a job in a Hong Kong-based MNC uh, as a quality assessor. It's a textile company, mm -hmm. and for the last four years, he's been working there. And uh, so, so these are some of the ways in which Jivika helps. Mm -hmm. so it's very important to equip these children with the skills through which they can earn a livelihood. They either do something of their own, or they're able to get into a job. Mm -hmm. Blue Coach was a response uh, from our side to the uh, situation in the country uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh -huh. like, uh, for the informal job workers, which is primarily what most of the parents of our students do, uh -huh. uh, there is no job portal where they can go and get a job. So we decided that we'll set up a hyper-local job site called Blue Coach, uh -huh. in which we will upload their profiles and connect to all our donors, uh, especially in the city of Gurgaon locally. Uh -huh. 
and see if you know they are looking for a driver or somebody to come and work at home and they could get back to their jobs mm. that was the thought and we were able to place uh, uh, 15 20 of uh, the parents of our students mm. and that continues now uh, but because the pandemic is pretty much gone people are able to freely look for jobs mm. so it's not that relevant right now uh, but at that time it really helped many of the parents to get a job and because of that they stayed in the city and the children were able to be kept in the education uh, system mm. So Fascinating. Fascinating. So I have time for two more questions. Uh, my next question is, what is the kind of support that society and government is giving or can give you? So, uh, you know, society uh, has, to, has to support this because uh, it is very important to have uh, equitable, you know, uh, society. Mm. And I feel that uh, all the privileged people um, it's it's their duty to support causes like ours or right. anyone who is working in this right. field, especially in our country where only 25 out of 100 students who would start school mm. are able to go into college. Mm. And I think the, the 25 who make it and by that are able to build a life, really it's the duty to educate mm. ones who are left behind. So I think society can help by contributions, uh, monetary contributions, by contributing in kind, mm. by giving their time, uh, these are the ways in which uh, society can 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 really help us. Right. As far as the uh, the government is uh, is concerned, we do partner with the various uh, government schools, mm -hmm. which uh, we are trying to fill the the gap which is there because of shortage of teachers. And I think that uh, cooperation is really important because I think both uh, the government and organizations like ours can work collectively. To ensure that the last mile execution mm. happens uh, in the in the best possible manner, and if we have people, you know, who are really committed and wanting to make a difference, that really acts a force multiplier for the various development schemes that the government uh, comes out with. Mm. Amazing, amazing. And my last question to you, uh, Kushal, and this is for the many many people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your own amazing journey of from the corporate world to Lotus Petal Foundation and all the wonderful things you are doing, what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away from our conversation? One, uh, one very important uh, learnings which I have, one is the power of one. Every individual has the capacity to make a difference in this world. Correct. And if you, we should believe in that, start small and finish big. Right. Is that uh, there is no obstacle which is greater than the purpose. Mm -hmm. Lastly, there is no greater joy than the joy of giving. And the joy of giving is something where the, the law of uh, diminishing returns really doesn't work. Mm giving more and more and the more you do the more you want to do mm. and enjoy so i think joy of giving is is really very powerful and it can be life-changing for any individual fabulous and on that note kushal and your three wonderful lessons that never underestimate the power of one as you have demonstrated it so beautifully where we can all make a difference uh, there is no obstacle greater than the purpose. Uh, and that, again, is something which is so important. A lot of us tend to give up uh, when we find uh, an obstacle. But if the purpose is clear, it will keep going. And your third one of the joy of giving, which is so important. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your own journey. Thank you for talking to me about Lotus Petal Foundation and the amazing work that you're doing. I mean, your story of Saloni, I think I will remember all my life, uh, you know, or whatever is left of it. And uh, you know, the story of how you started when you saw these two children not wearing any shoes. Thank you so much for speaking to me and for sharing your story and good luck. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. 
just search for the brand called you